Only Feds, The Bump, and Losing Weight on today's Fed Babble. Welcome to today's Fenababble, where we make federal retirement benefits understandable for humans like you. I am Kevin Jones. And I'm Cassie Knight. We take questions from viewers like you and listeners um, who submit questions online at fenababble.com and from Kevin's um, uh, workshops and webinars that he's been doing through FedPilot. Great. So let's get into today's questions. Question number one yes. is this. Hi, Hi threes. threes. Oh, oh no. no, Cassie, go ahead. You go. My bad. <laughs> okay. Hi, Threes. Is this strictly federal employment? I think they're talking about the high three to calculate a pension. Like if that stills, um, that calculation is used you know, for just federal employees or for everybody? Is that state employees? You know, it's kind of hard to say if I don't know what other types of employees they're talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Well, high three, yeah, so you're right. High three is used to calculate the uh, the pension. Most companies don't have a pension and every pension for companies work differently. So my guess is that the answer overall would be yes. But might there another company or a state or local government mm -hmm. have a high three? Yeah, they may have a high, so, do a high three. Here's the thing. I helped my mother-in-law um, yeah. figure out like her pension and all that. She got um, let go early due yeah. to COVID and everything else. And actually hers was, she was a state employee under PERS 2 program. And right. it was actually based on a high five average. It was 60 consecutive months. Sure. So I'm going to say it depends, but you can always look up whatever program that is, research it. You know, just Google that program, um, whether it's PERS 1, PERS 2, or, you know, whatever that looks like, because I know law enforcement officers and, and those kind of folks might be under different or um, special types of programs. Even if they are some of the PERS, they might be like a special PERS program. I don't know, because <laughs> I know for us, you know, law enforcement officers and, and firefighters, they just have a different calculation, right? Yeah. But then there's still FERS employees because a lot of the benefits are the same. It's just a slightly different calculation in their pension still based on the high three, but then the factor is different um, when you're actually doing that calculation. So right. um, if they aren't federal employees, look up the program because there are a lot of different things out there. And, you know, if you, um, you know, need help finding out like what a benefit looks like, if you get to continue health insurance or something like try and ask somebody uh, or ask around and, or research if there's a specialist in your area for that program. Yeah, and I'll also say that um, with high three, so this, I find it really interesting as I talk to a lot of federal employees that they will say that they will think, okay, and, and this is kind of hard to uh, really explain, but when we talk about social security, sometimes some people get in the mind that social security is for federal employees, but it, forgetting yeah. that it's also for everyone, right? And then, yeah. and then high threes, you know, this is kind of the opposite, assuming that high threes are for everyone when no high threes are just for federal employees. And so it's difficult. I think that's part of the difficulty sometimes is remembering what is only for federal employees and what is, well, I'll say mm -hmm. only, right, typically, or yeah. what is only, or well, I'll say only, what is for all Americans or right. what is for your spouse's maybe pension or 401k or whatever and the rules for the 401k for example mm -hmm. do not apply to the tsp and 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 it is all over the not place. all of them 
Right. And it's yeah. very difficult to remember which rule goes where. Does it apply to both or does it apply to one or the other? And then when trying to mm -hmm. figure out what you should do for retirement, if you're applying the wrong rule or the non-existent rule to a situation where you shouldn't, oh, that's going to mess everything up right there. That's going to be Oh, yeah. Fun. You definitely have to make sure that you get all these rules and the facts straight for you know, whatever you choose to do um, in life, because I mean, even if you get a rule right, it might be different if you separate from service rather than if you're right. in service, right? And so there are so many different, um, you know, pieces of the puzzle that really we got to make sure that we're putting this together right. Um, and that's why we offer our reports and, you know, for people to reach out to us and get in touch with a trusted financial professional who can help them piece together all these little things um, and make sure that we're getting the rules, the correct rule um, put in the right spot. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Like they can look at that financial picture and set them up for success. Good. That's the goal. Good. Yes, it is. Okay. What's the next question, Kevin? Number two. I hear even if you begin, I think that's supposed to be begin drawing social security at 62, you will still see the bump at the full benefit age. So this Am is, I reading that correctly? Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> No, I take the questions as they come from them and I don't edit them. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, so, and that, what that does really overall is it allows us to, possibly interpreted it a couple different ways, maybe. And so we could answer them two different ways. But in this one, yeah, I think I hear even if you begin, I think that's begin drawing social security. So social security, this is for everyone, all Americans, not just federal employees mm -hmm. at 62, you will still see the bump. Now the bump, I believe that they're talking about is well, I don't. Well, the the only bump that I can think of is that if you're not drawing Social Security at 62, you know, we say at every year it goes up about eight percent. It's really every month, but uh, every year it goes up about eight percent. And they're asking at the full benefit age, even if they draw, start drawing at 62, won't they see the increase? What do you think? So. I think that they're a couple of different things. Okay. They're either interpreting their um, social security statement incorrectly. And they're thinking, right. well, if I take social security at 62 and it says I'm getting $1,400 now, then at my full retirement age at 67, then I'm going to get $2,100. Right. I don't know if these, what the numbers are, but there's a difference between the ages that you take um, social security. And just because you take social security at 62 does not mean that you're going to have that much at 67. That is if you delay taking right, or right. delay begin beginning to take social security. And so I'm, I think they might be confused on that part or they're thinking in terms of a disability type of retirement. And maybe they're just getting confused on the different types of retirement and how that works. Because with um, with a disability type retirement, then you there is a bump during certain times um, because things are recalculated at certain ages. Okay, and so um, uh, full retirement age for Social Security is one of those bumps that even if you retire at sixty two or less, um, then you know you're going to see a, a bump. A little bit and let's not this let's not get confused on the cost of living adjustments that naturally happen with social security right. either correct good right because i think that's something else that people don't think about like you're if you start um if you start taking social security today at age 62 for 1400 dollars, then you're going to have a little bit of a cost of living adjustment typically every year. Okay. Right. Sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes it's very minimal, but you still have a little bit of increase just based on the cost of living adjustment uh, for inflation. Now that's not a bump though. And it's not going to change at your full retirement age. It's just going to be a steady little increase every year. So it will, you know, obviously be different 
then at 67, then you're the amount that you're collecting at 62. Uh-huh. Right. What do you say, Kevin? So, yeah, I think, I think that bump, the word bump is, could be translated a few different ways, translated to, I guess, taken a few, few different ways. <laughs> we just have to be careful. I think when asking questions, it's important to use as much as possible the precise language language that we mean and use use the correct language because again bump could be a couple different things um an, a, a classic case of this is the what a lot of people call the social security supplement which there is no mm-hmm. such thing okay. right right and so they they say right. that and then it gets starts getting confused with other things and so I don't know when, and, and right. unless someone really knows what they're talking about, it's, and, and they're having this one-on-one conversation, let's say with, uh, with someone that they work with, they're not going to be able to dr- drill and say, okay, when you say bump, what does that really mean? And then mm-hmm. that those expectations, and it could be something completely different than what they first interpreted it as. And so again, right. it, it's just really important to make sure that we're using those uh, things. But overall with this, yeah. when we, or when anyone starts for the most part, again, it always depends, but when we start drawing social security, we've locked in the amount. Mm-hmm. We're not going to see that extra bump every, you know, the 8% every year that we talk about in the workshop. We're not going to see that. It locks it in. And yeah, well, we'll, we will get colas, but it's Mm -hmm. not going to be the extras that we typically would think. Right. Especially if you retire, right? Because you're not going to have that earned income to, uh, to bump it. Yeah. Right. People think, oh, well, I'm going to quit. And then in five years, I'm going to collect X amount. Well, if you look at the social security statement and you really read it, it states that that is if you are going to earn X amount of dollars every year until that age. Right. Right. And so I think, um, you know, it's not very clear. It's in the fine print because these are government documents. (laughs) (laughs) We can. (laughs) That's that's so true. That is so true. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, we can guesstimate, but until you actually go in to take your Social Security as well, then we can't tell you how much that's going to be and if that number is even going to be accurate. Yeah. Boy. But, but we lots can to think really, about there. Really close. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's go to yeah. number three here. Okay. I- I was turned down for federal long-term care because of my weight. Any suggestions besides losing weight, LOL? <laughs> I love this. When when she oh, asked man. this question in the, in the webinar, it was, uh-huh. I just said, thank you just for being real. <laughs> you know, and I, yeah. I appreciate that. Just, you just said it and you're not ashamed of it or embarrassed by it. You just said it. I love that. Well, exactly. I think she asked or he asked the question that everybody else is thinking. Right. Right. Yes. Because nobody wants to say that question though. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Got to be so careful. But, but that is yes. that is a real question and I think okay, so mm-hmm. not before we even get into the question, I want to talk just about the question in and of itself because too many people are scared to ask the questions they really ought to ask. Too many people are scared to say, okay, I, I don't want to mention my weight because I'm too embarrassed by it. I don't care. If you're embarrassed by it, we need you need to ask that question probably more than any yeah. other question. <laughs> and you know, that's so funny too, because when I was helping federal employees um, do the retirement planning and everything mm-hmm. else, then... I would ask them, you know, for their information to make sure I was getting them a good quote or whatever. And they were like, oh, well, do you want my weight? Like, you know, how close do I need to give you for a weight amount? Like, 
Right. <laughs> it was just always a thing. And so for this person to be so open and honest, and these are the questions, uh, I just want to point out too, that these are the questions that you need to be asking when you're talking with financial advisors yeah. and insurance professionals. Yes. Like they need to know this information um, because the good news is about this question is there are so many other opportunities, mm -hmm. right? Like long-term care is not the only option, but um, if we're just talking about the question, like this is a question that you need to be asking, um, you know, for those types of reasons to do that planning. And so I just love the question because it's one of those right questions yes. that, um, that need to be asked. So yep. that's good. And it could, you know, the, it could be something as simple as I've hardly put anything into my TSP. What should I do about that? Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you told me about that. Right. I mean, not, not me personally, but when you're talking to a financial professional, right. you should say those kind of things, be completely open and honest. There is no, there is no embarrassment. There is no guilt nope. trip. There's nothing. It's a guilt-free zone when you go to talk to a financial professional, when you go to get the report, when you go to do all this, it's guilt-free. Please never yep. think that we, Cassie and I, or the financial professional, whomever you work with, will look on you and think, you're a fool. Or, oh my goodness, I can't or, <laughs> come away and go, <laughs> guess what this one guy told me? No, you don't do that. No. Wherever you are, think, let's get you going and help you. Mm -hmm. I think people are so taken aback, like, oh, I don't have enough, or oh, you know, it, all of those lies that we like to tell ourselves. Yeah. We do that with when it comes to the retirement planning and everything else as well. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Right. Like, those are just lies that we tell ourselves <laughs> to hinder ourselves from taking action, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, honestly, I do the same thing. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not knowledgeable enough or, you know, I I don't know what I'm talking about or I'll just get down on myself sometimes, right? But um, that's obviously not the case because advisors are looking at me and, you know, so thankful that I'm providing the advice that I am to them, um, even if it takes a little while. But we find the answer, right? And yep. we get that information to them and we're making sure that they have that candid information and that it's solid um, so that they can tell the employee about it. But, you know, every once in a while I'm like, oh, well, do I really know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, right. Always questioning, always questioning ourselves, right? And always, always feeling because of that question exactly. that we're not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. And so this- Employees do the same thing. Anyways. Yeah, this we need question, to answer the question before we overall <laughs> is is in a way opening the kimono, right? <laughs> in, yeah. in a in a figurative way. Any suggestions? I you know the suggestion I would give is talk to a financial professional because they have more options than the one option that the federal government gives you. So they may have something there. Absolutely may have something. Yeah. And 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 if it's not a long-term care program, it could be something else that takes care of long-term care that isn't called long-term care insurance. Lots of lots of right. options out there. There are living benefits that somebody can include right. on other types of policies, whether it's annuities or um, life insurance or something like that, right, that can take care of these. Now, you know, if you're looking at the the weight stuff and the medical stuff, then maybe the annuity is the best option rather than the life insurance, or maybe that's just the right, uh, not the right company to work with, work with. You know, every company has their own parameters as well as, and charts and things like that, as far as like height and weight are concerned and, you know, uh, different ratings for, for different things. And so what I would really suggest is um, ask that question to a financial advisor. If you've got one, great. If not, let us know and let's, let us get you connected with somebody who can answer that question um, directly after they have all of the information and the facts to work with there. Yeah. Cassie, why don't you continue and talk about that real quickly as we end here? Um, so, yeah, if you want to go to fednobabble.com, right, then you can submit um, that question. You can fill out the form to get in contact with us and 
Um, we'll get you to a financial advisor who will be able to prepare a report for you. And then they can answer all those questions for you. Um, and the report just lists out kind of where you are with your benefits. So that way they can see where you're going and what adjustments need to be made and help you out with that. Um, and of course, if you um, ask a question and we use it on the Fenobabble uh, show, then we'll send you a Fenobabble t-shirt. Great. And as always, if you would, please share, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you see this, we'd love it. And of course, please make sure you share it with your federal employee friends because they need to know this stuff just as much as you do. So mm -hmm. love these questions today. Um, hopefully everyone got some great info from it. And until next time, take care.